So my name's Steve Murphy. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to be here talking to you about, about Africa and Nigeria in particular. So this is it. I've been in IT forever. You know, this is way back, you know, taking stuff off of mainframes and before PCs were around and all of that kind of thing. And, and I've been delighted with it. I've kind of evolved through the business. I would hate to try and get in it these days because the amount of degrees and qualifications you need to get into IT these days, unless you're doing some kind of gaming app on a, on a, on a phone, then it's ridiculous. But it's a great industry to be in. And it's changing the world, I think. We have a big play around social innovation and big data and how it's changing the world. And it's changing the world no faster, nowhere any faster than it is in Africa right now. It's a phenomenal place to be. And I'm glad to say my technology, the area I'm doing with, is changing lives fantastically. We can put into a child's hand in Nigeria more information today than President Clinton had in his whole tenure as president of America. It is amazing the amount of power that we can produce inside this world today. And that's changing the world, that is really changing the world. I've got, um, I, I work for this company, Hitachi. This, this uh, company, Hitachi, uh, um, is a Japanese organization. It's been around for over 100 years old. It does everything from nuclear power stations, we're building four of them here in the UK, to the bullet train in Japan, we're building the new Intercity 125 here, this fast link that we're doing here, and then the bullet train going across Europe. That's all going to be Hitachi. We do televisions, we do drills, we do everything, absolutely everything you could possibly imagine, really. And it's a great company. We employ over 360,000 people around the, around the world. And my job is in the IT bit. So I do the IT bit of, 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 uh, for Hitachi, and that's about 50% of the revenue. So about $500 million, $50 billion comes out of information technology. So the bullet train is actually a data center on wheels these days. Sure, it transports people across, but there's so many data, so many data points on it, it's quite hard to imagine how, how, how technology is, is going to evolve on that. We create more digital information today, and on a single day today, we, we create and store more digital information than we ever did in the history of mankind in a handwritten format. Isn't that just an amazing um, statistic? But this is the bit I do. So in all the big data centers in the world, I do the servers, I do the storage. 82% of the world's IT is on Attachee stuff. People don't probably know that. A lot of IBM stuff, a lot of Hewlett Packard stuff, a lot of Cisco stuff is Hitachi designed, generated, engineered and built and then distributed with probably somebody else's badge on the out front of it. Hitachi is not a great marketing organization, but it's a brilliant engineering company and that's what we do. I'm pushing us out now, so we are going out and we get more and more of the logos are coming with Hitachi in the front end as Hitachi are trying to come out of um, being a very Japanese-centric organisation. So to, to support that, sorry, to support that, w my headquarters is in Hong Kong, is in um, California now. So I get a great mix of Japanese culture and longevity and politeness and all the great things that you get from a Japanese culture and, and fantastically engineered technology with also that kind of West Coast Californian um, sales and marketing bent on it. So, you know, a good mix, I think. So all of the big companies that you could imagine from BP to the British government to the Federated States of America to Chevron and everybody else really are using our technology to either keep the planes in the air or help govern the population, civilians, or to help store and manage our, our, our money in their banks. That's what we do. So. This is the territory I run. So I run the emerging markets for us. So I run everything from Poland all the way down to South Africa and, and from West Africa all the way over to Pakistan. Um, and and it's, an, it's an amazing technology uh, territory. You know, I've done New York before. I lived in New York for a few years doing the city thing. I ran the UK. I was the MD of, of um, Hewlett Packard in the UK um, with 20,000 staff and... $10 billion target, I know I run this emerging markets thing and I have never been so excited about a job or a territory in my life. It is just phenomenal. I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why that is right now. But it's a great territory and it's growing like crazy. In Africa, I've got 300 staff. I do about $150 million here and that's only been in the last two years. So we are growing incredibly in the region. So it's very exciting. So 
When we think about Nigeria, what do we think about? The first time I went down to Nigeria, I was terrified. I really was. I went to see this customer. It was the CEO of EcoBank. I'm sure some of the Nigerian guys would know the brand. And it's a great company. It's a great uh, um, um, bank in Nigeria. And it's very acquisitive. It's buying up lots of, lots, of, uh, lots of other banks and putting them together. And I was sitting there, and it was the first thing in the morning. I got in late at night, and the, 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 uh, the, the chief exec is sitting over the other end. And he said, Steve, what was your first trip like into Nigeria? And I said, you know what? It was good. And he says, did you see any lines? And I says, no. He says, was there any buildings on fire? I says, no. He says, was there any riots on every corner? And I said, no. Were you expecting it? I said, I kind of was, really. <laughs> because that's the impression that people give you, you know? And it's just not the case. It is a brilliant, vibrant energy place. And the warmth, I'll talk about the warmth of the people. We don't see any of that. And people are going in here not just because it's a warm place and the people are fantastic and the sky is as big as anything you've ever seen, but because of the opportunities. You know, Eddie talked about the opportunities in the market and the growth in the market and the population and everything. We'll talk about that in a second. But the BRIC countries are where everybody's been talking about in the past. Brazil, Russia, India and China have all been great growth countries. And you can see that. The GDP is phenomenal in those ones. And also in South Africa. For the last decade, when people have been talking about growth after apartheid, they've been talking about growth in South Africa. And that's true. You know, still a vast amount of money is generated out of that. But then what about Nigeria? You can see Nigeria coming up. 168 million population. 50% of those are kids under the age of 19 who for the very first time are getting devices in their hand that have got information in it. That are getting opportunities to get a contract, a cheap contract of a telecoms operator that they can do banking, that they can transfer money, that they can get on Google, that they can get emails, that they can access somebody in Glasgow should they want to. It's a phenomenal opportunity for us, and that is what's causing all of this change. It's not that Nigeria is changing, it's just that the opportunities are changing around Nigeria. And there's going to be growth as well. You know, there's 1.1 billion people in, in Africa just now, and, and the expectation is, is by 2050, that's going to be 50 billion, uh, sorry, it's going to be 2 billion, 2 billion people in Africa. And again, that's going to cause opportunities. So people are talking about BRIC. But they're also now talking about the Mint region, Mexico, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Turkey. This is going to be the next place where people are still going to come into. I think BRIC will still be around, but by, by sure, these regions are going to be, the Mint regions are going to be in there. And the fact that the whole world is talking about Nigeria is really interesting as well. So GDP, the, 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 the population is, is, is generating some great growth in GDP. That's fantastic. The, uh, the, the African Development Bank has been talking about 6.8%. I've seen it as high as 9%. But whatever it is, it's still phenomenal. We've also got big companies coming in there, Chevron and others, and I'll talk about some of the others that we enjoy relationships with, are into the region as well. That gives us a stability. That gives us a guaranteed revenue stream coming into the region. And we've also got really big countries coming in. You know, the connotations of China coming into any region has got great connotations and also quite bad ones as well. You know, the longevity and the control you have over the region. If China come into it, I've got all of the, all of the stuff in there. But they're coming in and they're pulling a lot of money into the region, which is, can only be a good thing. So, great region, great people, great warmth. What do my lawyers see when every time I jump on a plane and go down to Lagos? You know, this is a reality, this is, guys, you know. Unfortunately, they don't see themselves in handcuffs, it's me, because I'm the director of the business. So what they are concerned about what goes down in there. And it's not just a concern that's, you know, that's based on, you know, um, uh, on, 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 on um, it's not just a concern that, that is uh, on, on hearsay, it's, it's true, but, but the numbers are real in Africa. And I'll talk about the concerns we have going into the business in a second. One of the reasons that we should be doing is this is the new Asia. This is the new Russia. This is the, one of the fastest growing economies in the world. You know, double the capital, double the, GBT, the GDP per head in the last 10 years. One of the biggest oil reservoirs in, you know, around the world and has, and has got a sustainability in there as well. We're not talking about the North Sea running out here. We're talking about the reserves around, around the natural reserves around West Africa that are going to be there for a long time. The lucrative telecoms organisation, when we said all of these kids are demanding 
online, on demand, in the palm of their hand immediately, you know, and this is great opportunities. And also, given my heritage, this thing about the Nigerians drinking more Guinness than the Irish, I think, is just hilarious. <laughs> this is brilliant, actually. So, here's one of the things, and this gets me on to the lawyers. The brown bits are the growth regions around the world. And we can see the brick regions, Brazil, India, China, all there. And we can see the great growth regions in Africa as well. It's a great opportunity. This is what's attracting people into the regions. And this was brought up by the International Monetary Fund. If I look at where corruption is around the world, though, you can kind of see the brick regions are still there. And so is Africa as well. So if I match both of these things up together, you can see wherever there is growth, there is a challenge as well. There is an opportunity for corruption or bribery, and we've got to be careful on that. I don't want my presentation to be around that, but I just want us to be careful of what it is we're going into. And it's not just about there's an opportunity. The consequences of getting on the wrong side of doing business can be severe. This is a guy, Jack Stanley, Albert Jack Stanley, who is the ex-chief executive of KBR. He was involved in a 60 million, a 6 billion um, um, uh, bribery. Uh, it was, uh, his business was worth $6 billion a year, and, and he was actually involved in, in a bribery case. This was on Bloomberg, and a 69-year-old man got, so the leniency is just not there, a 69-year-old man got jailed for two and a half years. This was on the Bloomberg page. On the exact same day as well, it went on Reuters page. So we get this wrong, it goes global. What we want to be is in the front page of Financial Times, in the front page of Bloomberg and Reuters for doing business for the right reasons, for the growth, for population, for doing social innovation, for changing people's worlds and not for being in the front page for these things here. And we'll go on. Japanese companies getting involved in the wrong way of it. Um, uh, Italian oil companies getting in the wrong way of it. And, um, and, and huge fines, hundreds of millions of dollars of fines or imprisonment. This is real. So let me just go back here. So why bother? We should bother because from here, from the UK, there has always been strong links, education links, business links. The, the, the lines from here, from an overseas shipping point of view, are all there. So the lines, the trading lines, are there now for us to go in and enjoy the benefits, the mutual benefits of doing business in, in West Africa in particular. So, um, you know, this is the second largest behind South Africa at the moment, trading state for us, and there is some government benefits in doing business here, There's some trade in environments, so some tax, um, reduced tax rates in doing business between the regions. You know, and Nigeria is still very highly positive around its economic growth. So there's lots and lots of big companies doing it already. Diageo, Standard Bank, people from South Africa coming up, Standard Bank, MTN, um, who else is in there, um, some, some of the South African names you maybe know, Woolworths, etc., ShopRite, they're all moving up into the region. And we've also got a lot of consolidation going on in the region as well. So um, Union Bank are buying up some of the other banks, some of the local telcos, etc., etc. So there's lots of stuff going on which always creates opportunity for us. So, and whatever industry sector you're looking at, oil and gas, agriculture, um, uh, uh, government, healthcare, finance, ICT, and education as well. Education is a huge thing. Most people that I speak to when I go to Nigeria have been trained outside of Nigeria, and we've got to help change that. We've got to help the education, we've got to help ICT and the universities become more relevant to business going forward. So when we go and do business, let's put something back into that, because we've got to retain the IP locally. I'll tell you why that's important in a second. And we've also got, you know, obviously the third largest um, film industry with the, with the Nollywood behind Hollywood, Bollywood. And we've got Nollywood doing some fantastically fun stuff in, in the market as well. So how did I get into it? I bought a reseller down there, my reseller. I had a dedicated reseller in South Africa, uh, and I bought them, one, to secure the revenue I was getting in there. There was an opportunity for them to, to not be dedicated to me and go and sell somebody else's kit. So I, I bought them two years ago. They had legal entity branches around Africa, but actually they were just branches. We didn't have anybody in them, so I had to put people in them, into those branches. The first mistake I made was to take South Africans and move them up into the region. It wasn't that the South Africans weren't good, they weren't intelligent, they weren't hardworking, they just weren't regionalised. So the Kenyan guys wanted to deal with Kenyans, quite rightly. 
the Nigerian guys wanted to deal with Nigerians, or at least West Africans, quite rightly. So what we did is, you know, we, well, you know, I did the investment, moved the people in, I've moved them back out, and now we're going back in and, and supporting and hiring locally. It's a really important thing. The cultural demands are really, uh, are really important. So it's a, it's a big thing. It allowed me, though, to go into all of these, um, all of these countries as which I am today. Nigeria is my hub for West Africa. Kenya is my hub for East Africa, and then I run South Africa to my, is the hub for the whole of the South and the SADC regions. Um, but the big thing about this is in the way I go to my businesses, I, I don't go direct, and there's a number of reasons for that. It just allows me a level of security towards the customer, um, and, and we'll talk about some of the challenges that you have on that as well. And I don't know any other multinational company that goes direct either. So if you're going into the country, it really is all about partnerships and alliances and relationships as you get down in there. There's some things to consider. There's different laws and, and, and tax uh, relationships you need to have in there. I'll talk about that in a second. There is security concerns. We've had a few incidences in the, in, uh, throughout the year. Um, uh, mostly at the dead of night and mostly when people should, are, are in places where they shouldn't be, it's got to be said. The exact same thing can happen here in London or in Glasgow or in Moscow or wherever else you are, you know. But for some reason, we tend to get people wandering in some of these countries. God only knows why. Um, the high youth unemployment creates, you know, some opportunities, some challenges for us as well, you know, so some of the regions. And just because there's so many people in such a confined space, that becomes a bit of an issue. And, and the power and infrastructure instability means that business continuity can be a challenge, but also... The cost of infrastructure, power and electric and gas and everything else is really expensive to go into. So whatever your running costs are today, you can expect your running costs to be quite more severe when you go into some of the regions. Um, so my, my recommendation is when you're doing it is you're going to have to partner, right? So every single business bit of business you do will have a partner community in there. It will be a distributor, it will be a reseller, probably an influencer as well, if, especially if you do business with government. Don't be afraid of it, but be diligent when you're picking the partners. We do all of the stuff around about them. We check the financial background, we check their business history, we check the relationships they have, we check their websites and everything else. And you've got to be careful with that. Be diligent when you're conducting business and the supply chain of it as well, because what you don't want is to get somebody to bolting stuff onto your product or your solutions or services and it ending up at the customer not the way you imagine it to be. That can kind of happen. And all of this stuff just says, just, just do your homework. Just make sure you know who you're selling to and why they're going to, what they're going to use the technology or the product for, irrespective of what industry you're in. And sorry, and just let me see that this very last one. You know, you know um, business and partnerships in the region, I think, is really important, more so than I've seen anywhere else, really. I think there's a great cultural, um, in, in, in West Africa, there's a great culture about relationships. And, and, and I'm really enjoying going there, actually. I, I, I try and get down every three or four weeks into the region, more so because we've got such great growth going on there. Um, oh, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Um, uh, but also, I really enjoy it as well. So on that, my personal views on, on doing business there, I love the culture. You know, like the Japanese culture, it's, it's very polite and very friendly. Um, sometimes that can get in the way because out of respect, sometimes the, what I find is Nigerians won't actually come to my face and say, no, we're not going to do it, I'm going to go with the other guy. So, you know, you, you know, the sales cycles are kind of slightly different, but it is a great culture. They're also a hard bargaining, you know, everybody likes a bargain, everybody wants to haggle, everybody wants to get their money's worth, and that's no bad thing either, you know. It means that we're working hard for it. And when the inflation rates, when the cost of living is so expensive, then they need to squeeze everything out of the price of the product. Not a bad thing again either, you know. Discussions and, and you know, there's a very family orientated way of doing business. And for, if you're from the UK or Central Europe, that can be kind of tough sitting around the table and talking about your family for half of the meeting before you actually get onto the business. But actually it's a nice way of doing business. Why wouldn't we do that? If you're going to be sitting with somebody for 60 hours a week, it's kind of important, really, I think, to know what the family values are. And the family values in West Africa and Nigeria in particular, I think are great. I really think it's great. But it is different. If you're used to doing business in here in the city, you, you know, you don't get offered a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a glass of water. It's just straight into business, you know, because they don't have time. 
I'm not saying Nigerians do have time, but they just want to know who they're talking to and why they're talking to. And that's not a bad thing these days at all, is it? That's a nice thing to be having. And the bottom line there on me is, is that I would definitely surround myself with legal experts, local legal experts. We've got some in here, executive search companies, um, uh, finance experts, legal experts, and I would definitely have those people around about you. It gives you a confidence to be able to go and do business the right way in a territory that is fantastic. So my last slide, this is the suit that the local guys gave me the last time I was down, I loved it. And, and um, uh, I think in five years, the brown bits on Nigeria on that African map will be even browner. I think the growth is going to continue, and I think it's going to continue at some pace for two reasons, really. One is the desire in Africa is stronger than I see it anywhere else in the world. I also think the infrastructure will get better, and as the infrastructure gets better, the cost of living will come down and the amount of population and the demand on the population that the population is going to put on business for better infrastructure, for better banking, for better schools, for better education, and their bigger companies are going to come into the region as well. It's just going to get bigger. So I think the brown bits will get browner, and I think the red bits will get less red, if there is such a thing, such a terminology. But you know what I mean? I think it will go more yellow than it will brown in those regions. I love going down there. It's a brilliant place. The atmosphere, the people, everything, the warmth of it is just the most a magic place as well. I'm going to keep going down. I'm going to keep enjoying the country and keep enjoying the people. And I would highly recommend you all try it as well, if you haven't already. So that's all for me. I hope I didn't take up too much time.